Good morning. So it is February 28th. And uh, I was thinking last night, where did the month go? And as we were doing our invoicing for the feed business, we figured out where the month went. The month went to make and feed. So we had the biggest month we've ever had since we started doing that. And uh, it just it just absorbed the whole entire month. Between making the bags, uh, loading the bags, doing the maintenance on the tractors, the hammer mill, all that stuff. It just, that's where February went. That's a good thing, not complaining about it, but uh, it hasn't... You know, it hasn't really allowed for much videoing. I mean, everybody, everybody that's watched this channel knows knows what I do and knows what it takes to make a bag of feed. So today, I thought uh, I want to talk one thing about you know basically grain marketing, uh, grain pricing, and two articles I read that I feel relate to each other to actually basically prove why. Uh, farmers haven't benefited from the high grain prices that we're seeing today. So the first one was uh, net cash income, or sorry, I guess the first one published on February 24th was grain shortage due to and cold snap delay loading at the coast. So they're saying because of a, a grain shortage and uh, the trains couldn't run through the 10 day cold snap we had there's ships waiting at the coast for grain that are just bobbing around out there in the water and uh, there's no grain at the coast to fill those ships in that article it said there's 42 ships sitting at the at the west coast we have two ports vancouver and prince rupert between those two ports there's 42 ships waiting with 12 more on the way <clears throat> and no grain also in that article it says farmers ship an average of 1.2 million tons of grain weekly throughout the year that's the average uh, shipment across the prairies in Canada. Uh, their last week or whatever, last few weeks, they've been averaging 458,000 tons. So roughly a third less grain being shipped to the coast as, uh, as per the average. So <clears throat> suspicious to me, right? The, the, the next article published the next day was net cash income improves as crop prices soar so they're saying that the farmers because the price of grain is is so high right now and it is record highs they're, they're going to make so much more money that's not true and it's not true because of the first article about the grain shortages there is no grain in the prairies you know there there is no more grain and why is there no more grain the crop was not as big as stats canada said they lied. They lied in the U.S. as well. The USDA had to revise their report, and so did Stats Canada. You know, those predictions are often detrimental to ag because they're they're just a bunch of a bunch of BS. You know, there's no way to prove until that grain is in the bin. There's really no way to even accurately assess it. You got to assess quality and you got to assess quantity, and it's really tough to do because you get any adverse weather, quality changes. You get enough adverse weather that the crop stays out, and now quantity changes. So. Anyways, they both lied. They said there was going to be record yields across the board. There wasn't. I know there was pockets of record yields. That's fine. There always is every year. There's pockets of record yields and there's uh, pockets of absolute uh, disaster, right? Disaster areas. So there wasn't as much grain as they thought. And secondly, with our broken marketing system that's been created basically over the last 10 years, where they've shut down all the local elevators, consolidated them, built one big elevator, in order to ensure yourself a delivery date, now this is important to, to uh, you know farmers that need cash flow in the fall. They got spring bills that they hadn't paid yet. They got fall bills now. They got machinery bills. You know farmers carry quite a bit of debt, so they need that cash flow to ensure that they get a delivery date in the fall, so they can move some of their product. They have to pre-sell that grain basically around now or throughout the winter. So what happened was the 2020 crop was committed in 2019 at basically 2019, 2019 and a half prices, right? Those prices were not as high as they are now. Right now we're at record high prices. Back in 2019 and halfway through the year into 2020 when this grain was getting priced, the, the prices were two, two and a half, three dollars a bushel less. In, in, uh, in relation to canola, it was like eight dollars a bushel less. You know, so I know tons of people that sold canola off the combine for 11.75. Canola now is 18.27, right? So they left like seven dollars on the table. I know a lot of people that sold barley for three eighty, three ninety, four ten. Barley right now is six fifteen. They left two dollars a bushel on the table. This 
is a very common occurrence across the prairies. So our, our busted marketing system and our unfortunate consolidation of grain delivery points has, has created a situation that's tied the farmer's hands. If you do not commit your crop, you will not get a delivery date. There are quite a few farmers that, uh, I, I shouldn't say quite a few, I don't know how many there is, I don't think there's quite a few. There's, there's a, a, a small population of the farming groups that, that do save their grain. They keep basically one year ahead of time, so they got grain in the bins and they can capitalize on these high grain prices. Those farmers, yes, their net income is going to rise because they kept, I mean, we, my dad and I were talking last night specifically to one, you know, one grain bin we have, that's, that's barley from two years ago. So two years ago, we were waiting for like $4 barley and it never came and we thought, ah, oh, we'll just keep it right now. Now barley's sick. So, and, and there's, there are, there, there are farmers that have done that. They will win, but on average they won't. So in this article, it, they, they put some dollar values on it. 17.6 billion basically being the top. The net incomes are already up 21.8%, could go up another 6.8%, which would be a total of $17.6 billion added to the farmer's pocket. That number is, it has to be based on the Stats Canada pro projected yield for 2020 and then today's price, which is a BS way to, to do that because that grain is already gone. That article would only make sense if every farmer that that produced a bushel of grain kept that bushel of grain until February 28th and then we all decided to pull the trigger today at the record high prices to sell the grain and we know that didn't happen because the grain shipments are a third of what they normally are if farmers had the grain they would sell the grain at record prices so we know this isn't happening because of these two articles alone the thing that gets me about these articles is when you start reading now and you see, holy cow, you know, the farmers across the prairies are going to, they're, they're going to generate another $17.6 billion for their, for their bottom line. Then you get the double edged sword effect. Now you have machinery dealers. I heard a rumor that the John Deere combine went from $900,000 to 1.3 million. I never even looked into it because that's so far out of my realm that, I mean, I'll, ne I'll never get there. So I don't even care to know, but if that's the case, that's why. Right. You know, some of these, you know, these machinery dealers, these boards or whatever, they, they're reading these articles and be like, oh, farmers are going to have a whole bunch more money. We better jack the price of the grain a little bit. Fertilizer goes up, chemical goes up, seed goes up, land goes up, both purchase price and rent price. These things all go up in relation to this article about farmers increasing their bottom line by $17 billion. The thing is, the article isn't accurate. Like I say, it would have been accurate if they, if every farmer kept every bushel and sold it today. That's not the case. The 2020 crop was committed back in 2019 for much, much lower crop or much, much lower prices. What that article should say uh, to be accurate is Canadian farmers leave a record $17.6 billion on the table due to lackluster marketing. Uh, and, and consolidated grain delivery points. Certainly up here in the piece. I know down in the south they have more delivery options than we do. But because of the fact that farmers needed to pre-sell their grain to get a delivery date, they left, you know, a maximum of $17.6 billion on the table. And now they're going to pay the price because the thought is out there and the thought is in people's head and the potential was there to make that money. And that's all they need is to know that the potential was there to make that money. And now the other end is going to take it. So your machinery dealers, seed, chemical, fertilizer, uh, mechanics, the whole across the whole board, everything involved in ag prices are going to go up because of articles like this. That's why I think that journalism and agriculture needs to do a little bit better job, needs to do a little bit uh, more research to figure this out and, uh, and, and actually to get it right. So, as I said, the article should not have read net cash income improves as crop prices soar, right? That would have only been true had the farmer saved all their grain and sold it at today's prices. We know that didn't happen because the shipments aren't there from the other article. The shipments are a third of what they normally are. So there is no more grain. If there was grain to ship, the farmers would be shipping it. Anyways, as always, to those who watch, thank you. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully I didn't ramble too uh, too far off base there. It is kind of hard to articulate some of this stuff, especially when you're 
passionate about the topic and frustrated by it, but uh, I think that's going to be it for, uh, for the video today, and uh, we will see you all on the next one.